Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Yeah, Karen was on vacation. While I was going on vacation, what does this guy do? I went ahead and did nothing. Uh, yeah, right, no. We made this Alfie table. It actually doubles as an assembly table, which is really awesome. I guess let's show you how we made this. This is gonna get interesting. Like most shop projects, we're gonna be using plywood. And in my particular case, I was able to get some red oak plywood. It's kind of my go-to look in my shop. And like all these projects, we start by rough cutting everything to size. Well, rather than you sit there and look at me rough cut plywood for the next 30 minutes, let me tell you what is a torsion top, just in case you don't know. A torsion top workbench has an internal grid structure that keeps it perfectly flat. And you do that by screwing it using, in my particular case, glue and pocket screws on one side, which ends up being the top, and with deck screws to the bottom. Plywood, by the very nature of the way it's built, is very, very stable, so we're gonna have zero movement, or almost zero movement in this table. So making out of plywood is a unique choice, and when we put the structure together, we will have a perfectly flat top, barring making a mistake, like gouging it, for ever. Make no bones about it, there are a lot of parts that go on with making this table, and here's a little tip if you don't have a stop block, or in this particular case, the pieces are too long for your table. Use your other pieces, cut one perfect, and then stack it on top of what you're cutting. You can then line your blade up with the original cut, and then you can just go ahead and mass cut the rest of the pieces, which is what you see me doing here. Even though I developed plans for this project, which we will be putting up on our store, one of the things I like to do is cut things long on purpose. I mean, let's be honest, we want this to be square. By cutting it long, I can use a speed square to make sure that things are square and then mark the final dimensions, take the piece back over into my chop saw, and then I cut it to length, saving me time later down the road. The sheer amount of components in this project dictate that we're going to have to do a lot of dry fitting. I mean, we should honestly be dry fitting all our projects, but who really does that, myself included? This one I definitely did. While again, while we have a set of plans and plans are great for the initial cut, making sure that everything fits prior to the commitment of screws and glues is key or it's going to throw the actual table off. Next up was marking where my drawers were going to be. Torsion box tables, because of the grid structure, leave a lot of room on the inside for storage. Most people will go ahead and they'll use cubby holes to put things in. In this particular case though, even though this is going to kind of act like an assembly table, it's more of an outfeed table. And I wanted to have space for all of my jigs and everything that goes along with my table saw I wanted to have close at hand. So I decided to add drawers. I may choose in the future to put cubbies on the end, but for right now I just kind of left it alone and I guess I'll get into that in a little bit. With the dry fit done and the drawers actually cut, it was time to move on to pocket screws. Now I cut an awful lot of pocket screws. I, I lost count, but pocket screws were the right decision for this. The pocket screws are gonna be holding the top to the grid structure from underneath. I mean, it makes no sense to drill holes in a perfectly flat surface. We'll save that for the bottom. For the longer pieces of the grid, I spaced them about eight inches apart. I could have gone tighter, but between the glue and the amount of pocket screws and the amount of screws coming through the bottom, this thing's already over-engineered. There was one exception to the internal grid where we actually used deck screws, and that's in areas where the pocket screws wouldn't reach, meaning I couldn't get a drill in there. So I just went ahead and I pre-drilled some holes with a countersink bit, and I used inch and a half deck screws to hold that in place. Between the glue, the pocket screws, and those deck screws, this thing's bomb-proof. So that's the way it went for the better part of a few hours. This is definitely not a 30 minute and done process. Like I said, there's a lot of pocket screws, a lot of deck screws, and a lot of glue to put down. And you wanna make sure this thing is square. So my suggestion to you is find whatever music makes you dance, get in there and just get it done. The drawer opening top and bottom pieces are actually only half inch thick. So there was one more thing to take care of. Grabbed myself some three quarter inch brad nails and made sure to tack everything down to give it extra support. It's gonna get support from the outside, so it's gonna be fine, but to keep it from moving before then, the brad nails definitely did the trick. I learned a valuable lesson building my miter station, which was a torsion box top as well. Got those plans from Michael Long of MK Designs. Did a video on it. If you haven't seen it, make sure you check it out. But the one thing that I did not do at that point was put the drawer slides in until after I had the torsion box top put together. 
So I went ahead and cut myself some spacers and I started installing the drawer slides before I placed the bottom on. That is gonna save me a lot of time, aggravation, and honestly time at the chiropractor and massage therapist from the contortion that it takes to actually install them once this thing's screwed together. It's a pretty exciting moment we get to here. At this point, everything had been done. It was time to actually put the bottom, although it's sitting on the top right now, onto the carcass. I took some spacers from scrap plywood so I could keep it up off of the carcass. I had already placed glue on the actual grid structure and went ahead and ran beads of glue all the way around. I wanna have glue on every surface before I affix this. After I was satisfied that there was glue on everything, it was just a question of removing those spacers that I had and laying the bottom, or top if you will, down on top of the carcass. I made sure I had clamps at the ready because I'm going to want to clamp it down. And this is the point where I'm going to start working on making sure that everything is square. I'd love to tell you that this thing was square, but it was out here or there. And a quick true up with a belt sander just took care of some of the overhang. I actually thought I had cut it a little bit long, but well, again, it's probably mistake number 542 out of the thousand I make on each one of my projects. After pinning one corner, making sure everything's square, then it was just a question of starting to lay the screws in through the bottom. I had already pre-marked using a T-square, a large drywall square, where the girders were underneath the plywood, so I knew exactly where I was going. So I pre-drilled some holes and at that point realized my drill was dead. That was a fun moment. But that's okay, I went over to my cordless tool hanger and thankfully I found that I had an actual extra charge battery, which explains why I'm doing this dance maneuver from the 1980s. I'm not quite sure what went on here, but I'm obviously super excited to get the rest of the screws through the bottom so that we can seal this carcass up. I recently covered this topic on a YouTube short. I truly believe in making workbenches for your shop out of plywood is the most economical way of doing things and probably the most sustainable. However, at the same time, I want to make sure that this table lasts for a very long time and plywood by its very nature has edges that can chip and get ruined. So I always go ahead and I find myself some domestic lumber at my local hardwood dealer and I wrap all of my workbenches in hardwood. Not only does that give it an extra bit of bling, because let's be honest, when we're working on stuff almost every day, we certainly want it to look good. But at the same time, it protects those edges and it makes sure that when I bump things up against the edge of the workbench, or in my case, accidentally run my jigsaw through it, that the workbench has more than enough protection to make sure that it's going to be around for a while. So that's what I did. I went to my hardwood dealer, I picked up some Sapili, and I went to my big box store and picked up some Project Red Oak, and I just made myself a face frame piece by piece. I measured each piece individually, and then I glued it on using Type Bond 3, and then used clamps and pin nails till the glue set up, and then this table is absolutely protected. I shouldn't have any issues going forward. Again, unless I, I don't know, run a circular saw through it, which I probably should not be putting that out in the universe. I let the type bond set up for about 30 to 45 minutes, and with the pin nails in place, it's not going anywhere. So I pop the clamps off and grab my router. I put a quarter inch chamfer bit into it, and I routered all the outside edges just to soften them. If you don't have a router with a chamfer bit, you certainly can use a block plane or a sanding block or your random orbit sander. Just you want to take off that harsh edge so that number one, you don't chip it, but more importantly, you don't get a really bad splinter. Once I was done with the chamfer, I grabbed my random orbit sander and I just put 120 in it. And I went around and I made sure to knock down any pin nails that were still standing proud of the wood and gave everything a once over so that we could get started on putting a coating on it. We want to make sure to protect this top and you have your choice of coatings. You can use shellac, you can use lacquer, I tend to use polyurethane. What I noticed when I was doing this was though that I actually own a sprayer and the level of laziness that I show is just fantastic. I mean, I probably could have sprayed this top in about 15 minutes and been done, but I didn't want to have to set up my sprayer and then have to clean it. No, I would rather do three coats of polycrylic using a brush, waiting in between each coat and sanding in between each coat, taking me three hours rather than the 15 minutes. I, just, you know what? Sometimes I don't understand myself. Building the drawers was a pretty simple affair. I used half inch plywood with quarter inch bottoms. So what I did was I cut the pieces to length and width. I also covered this in a YouTube short as well, how you can get perfect measurements so that you can save yourself time. Again, laziness took over. I didn't want to bring out my dado stack, so I ran each piece through the table saw once, then I nudged my blade over about a sixteenth of an inch and then ran them through again. 
Construction was using pocket screws and glue, of course, because that's what we're doing for the whole table. And then I went ahead and made sure to measure. You can always use plans, like I said, but nothing beats real world measuring. And I measured the bottoms, then went back to the table saw, cut all the individual pieces, slid them in, and then glued and pocket screwed the back piece on. And for good measure, we grabbed the brad nail and we put some brads in there just to keep everything from sliding until the glue set up. And then look, we have a drawer. There are many ways that you can measure to put your drawer box into your table. And in this particular case, as we know, I'd already put the slides in and you want the drawer to sit approximately a quarter of an inch above the below threshold so that when the weight in the drawer comes in, it doesn't drag. I actually did math for once it worked out. I found a piece of 3 8 inch scrap laying around the shop and I decided once I did the math that would be enough and that made it a lot easier for me to do all of these drawers. There were six of them. I used a Vix bit, which is a self-centering bit to pre-drill the holes and then I went ahead and I just affixed the slide to the outside of the drawer box making sure that the slide was to the front of the drawer itself and then I just placed them inside the hole and marveled in the fact that they actually worked on the first try. Go figure. I gotta be upfront and honest with you. I don't know why I get so excited about stirring polycrylic, but apparently I do. Maybe it's because I know we're coming to the tail end of the project. Well, all the mixing and dancing in the world was not gonna get this project finished, so we went right back at it. There's a big debate as to whether or not you should seal the inside of the drawers of your workbench. I always do. I say that it makes it easier to clean them out. You can leave a comment down below whether you think it's right. But I went ahead using polycrylic and I just brushed on two coats, making sure to sand in between each coat. And that way the drawer was sealed nice and tight. And yeah, like three years from now when I go to clean them out, it should be a breeze. Only a few things left to go, which includes the drawer fronts. Now, there's some pretty simple ways of doing this with jigs and such, but try this one. I placed the handle after finding the center on the drawer front on the drawer front itself and then I measure to make sure that that handle is actually centered. I then go about and I mark exactly where I want my screw holes to be for the handle. I place a shim approximately a quarter of an inch because that's the reveal I want all the way around for an inset drawer. And I double check my measurements on that reveal and once I'm comfortable with that I take my drill with the drill bit that I need for that specific handle and I drill through the actual drawer front and drawer box at the same time. This means that when I pull the drawer out, I can put the drawer handle actually on the drawer front itself, and then I adjust it for level. Once I'm sure that everything is good with it, I then grab myself some cabinet screws, screw it from the back, that's just for added security should the handle become loose, and my drawer front is already mounted. No fuss, no muss, no clamps. Last but not least, we want to take care of dressing up the front of these drawers so they're protected as well. So we come back, we take the handles off that we've already put on. Seems repetitive, I get that, but the screws are holding the front on so we don't need them anymore. I then take some 120 grit, I put it on a sanding block and I ease the edges of the drawers and my screw holes. You don't really have to go higher than that, this is shop furniture, but look, if you want to go up to 150, knock your socks off. I go at 120. I ease those edges with the sanding block and then using the same polycrylic that I got super excited about earlier, I go ahead and I put two coats of polycrylic on the front of these drawer fronts. I then reinstall the handles, put the drawers back in place, and now it's time to start loading the drawers up because this table is done.
We hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you hit that like, subscribe, and that little ringy dingy button so you know when we pop our next video out. We are planning on dropping videos every two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. So yeah, pay attention for some shorts, pay attention for some videos, pay attention for some poor painting. Yeah. <laughs> Keep an eye on us and we'll hopefully entertain you as well as elucidate you. Did you say elucidate? Yeah. Okay. We'll see you next time. Have a good day. <laughs>